All right, so Fresh and Fit are making a fool out of themselves once again, especially Walter, the guy who doesn't talk as much on the podcast. He is really embarrassing himself here, and it's hilarious to watch. Like, I always knew he was a goofball, but I never realized how dumb he actually is. I mean, this is just comical. Like, after this, I don't know how anyone could take him seriously, you know, because he's supposed to be this red pill, high-value male dating coach guy. But pretty much by his and Myron's own definition, he's basically just a simp. Like, for example, a year or two ago, he was in a relationship with a girl who would make TikToks bragging about how she finesses men and gets them to send her money. And apparently they met on a sugar daddy website and she didn't want to go out with him for a while, but then eventually he invited her on a yacht, which she agreed to. And she also talked about how she's very promiscuous, you know, so it's basically everything these guys claim to hate and love to call out on their podcast. I mean, that's like the whole premise of it. But of course, when Walter's dating one, then they think of all the excuses in the book for him. And I found this compilation. The original video, I think, got taken down, but Abba and Preach reacted to it. So this is from their video. And it shows that this girl is clearly somebody that these two will tell every other guy in the world to avoid. And it shows that Walter's a simp that's in complete denial. I mean, it's so easy to see through this girl's bullshit, but he just falls for it. And of course, he tries to say that she's not with him for the money or clout. And he says that he has game. And everybody there, you could tell, is cringing and just laughing at him. You said something on, like, last show when I was on. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit alarming. I have to be careful what they want me for. That being yeah. said, this shorty that here, bro. Listen, listen, listen. That shorty there, bro, wants me for me, hundred percent. All right, you, got it, what you, want. you said that she was very different from every girl you meet in Miami. When I've heard you speak about every girl in Miami before, you generalized. No, that being said, when I met her, I saw she didn't, hadn't been tainted yet. She hadn't been like in certain circles where, like, you know what? Damn, she's gone through the street. Why do you think she she's interested in you? Ask her. I was gonna say, can I answer this? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um. I feel like the first Merch. day that I met you, having that genuine conversation on the boat, like on a yacht. I, oh, on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> was it sixty foot long? Was it eighty five foot? I couldn't even Free tell drinks. you. I, see, I am a very big personality person. So, if he came up to me and he just came and was like, "Hey, let me get your number," that's a no from me. The fact that he invited me and he's been in, he invited me out before yeah and it was just the fact that me and my roommate were sitting at home yacht. no me and my roommate were sitting <laughs> at home and i was like wow what are we gonna do tonight and then like at that moment he texted me and he was, was like hey do you ride guys... with scooters or get on the yacht let's talk about it and he's right i'm not a materialistic person at all i could be if i wanted to i don't care about that shit like my dream car is a fucking honda civic like i don't there's nothing about me materialistic. Hold on, who said he invited you out before? Why you didn't go before? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was always hold busy, on. or like I was pretty new. Hold on, hold on, I was living. Hold on, wait, wait. No. You see what your problem is? You think that because I have clout, everyone wants me for clout. However, for you, that's that's true. For me, it's not. I actually have game, bro, right? That being said, hold on. That being said, right, bro? <laughs> not gay. Your experience, right, with girls is tainted because you want to see it for clout. Oh. That's what he said, bro. Want me for me. Dude, she doesn't want clout, bro. Honestly, she didn't want to do this live stream. She's doing this for me, so I appreciate her for that. <laughs> do I know you? <laughs> do I know you? I do a kango while it's inside. <laughs> do I know you? <laughs> do I know you? I do a kango while it's inside. Spit in my mouth. Look in my eyes. This keyword is wet. Come take a dive. <laughs> Beta bear. We met on seeking. Yeah, so we, we met on there. We definitely uh, spoke, and then I got Instagram. And that was it for like a couple months. Yeah. And we, we didn't talk for like, a, for like a minute. We didn't talk for like months because I didn't really want to meet people um, for a while. I was kind of taking a break because I had an interesting like living situation at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was not meeting. Last week you were with this dude. This week you're with this dude. <laughs> I see everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say no names, <laughs> but I will say she's here. Oh, and she's beside fresh. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, beta girl. People are trying to expose me, but like, it's you have to like date around. I don't know. Hold she's on, single. you gotta come back. Hold on. Let's go normalize playing the bachelorette in your personal life. Huh? You wanna have a hot girl summer? All right, bitch. You're gonna have a bunch of hot girl summers by yourself. Pause, pause, pause. No, don't, don't. All I'm gonna say now, nigga, it's my turn. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, next. <laughs> and it seems like he exclusively goes after and gets in relationships with the type of girl he claims to be against and he hates and makes fun of on his podcast. 
you know, like gold diggers, 304s, thoughts, whores, whatever you want to call them. As soon as those type of girls give him some kind of attention, he falls from hook, line, and sinker, which is hilarious considering basically the whole premise of his podcast is exposing those type of girls and making men aware of them. You know, they'll spend hours every week talking about how these girls are delusional and they're with you just for your money and they don't actually care about you. But then at the same time, he'll be in a relationship with that exact type of girl. And of course, Fresh and Fit have no problem calling out other people's relationships and saying that the girl's with the guy just for money or clout. But then when it comes to Fresh, who is clearly in the same kind of relationship as the people he's criticizing, him and Myron are in complete denial and just sound delusional about the situation. Well, I think Myron actually understands what's going on, but on the podcast, obviously, he'll defend him, even though now it's aged terribly because recently this girl that Walter was in a relationship with, who he defended from gold digger accusations, is pregnant with his kid. And of course, Walter's reaction is just telling her to get an abortion, but she says she wants to keep it. So, of course, Walter and Myron have done a complete 180 on her. You know, now they agree she's with him just for the money and she's trying to take advantage of him. Even though just a couple months ago, when their fans were calling Walter out for being with her because they know she's with him just for the money, and they saw he had just bought her a $30,000 bracelet, of course, Walter and Myron were defending her and saying, oh, she comes from money, you know, her family has a lot of money, so obviously that's not what it's about. And it's just so funny, they're surprised that their fans would think this girl is using him. I mean, obviously anybody would think that, but especially their fans. And tearing down women that we associate with, like sending them really weird and perverted messages. And she's new to America, bro. She's like, whoa, why can't someone buy a gift? Why can't someone do, do these things, for example, just in general? And they're like, yeah. oh, fresh. I'm like, bro, you have no idea. You weren't even here. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't live in Miami. Like, come on, yeah, man. bro. Um, but this girl comes from a rich ass family. Yeah, bro. You know how d difficult it is to get a visa as a Chinese national to come to the United States as often as she does? She comes from a very wealthy family, bro. Okay. And I don't know why Fresh hasn't explained this before, but she comes. That that's what it is. All right, her family basically because are fucking millionaires. He hasn't explained it. I don't want to explain it to him anything, bro. Yeah, I know, but this is. But here's the thing: they're trying to say yeah. that you bought the Van Cleef bracelet as if she's not capable of buying it herself, bro. Her money, her family got fucking dough, bro. They're rich as shit. She's Miss Asia, bitch. People are gonna use her pictures on escort sites. It happens. Oh, see, th this is why I don't want to explain because, dude, you don't understand these women at all, which is which is fine. But her specifically, bro, you don't sign her at all. So listen, whatever you want to say, bro, you can say, but I know what I did. And it's amazing that he said that because clearly he does not understand these women at all. Because now, obviously, he basically admits that she's just a gold digging, cloud chasing 304, which completely contradicts what he is just saying. You know, is she with him because she actually likes him for who he is? Or is she with him just for the money? And of course now he acts like their relationship was never that serious, but she claims he took her to meet his mom, you know, he's buying her expensive stuff, they're saying I love you to each other. You know, this wasn't just a one night stand or some girl he was seeing on the side. This was clearly a more serious relationship. I mean, she claims that he said he sees her as somebody that he wants to spend his whole life with. And she said she's going to move to Miami for him. And also they traveled to Barbados so she could meet his whole family. So I'd say this was a pretty serious relationship, which is just embarrassing for this guy because, you know, he's supposed to be a red pill, high value man who understands what women are like. Yet he brought this girl who he now claims is a 304 that was with him just for the money to meet his family. Like if anyone else did that shit, they'd be calling him a simp and be clowning on him. But with Walter, they try to play it both ways. You know, first they're like, oh, she's into him for who he is. She doesn't care about the money. But then once shit hits the fan, then of course they're like, oh yeah, she's a terrible person that was just using him the whole time. Which, if that's the case, you know, if that's what Walter actually believes, that she's using him the whole time, then he is a sucker. He's a simp. You know, he got played. She finessed him. And now she claims she's pregnant, so he might be on the hook for child support. I want the baby because I don't want to kill the baby. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to. You're not. They just give you a pill and it's over. No. No. I'm pregnant. No, but that's what I'm saying. The pill, they just give it to you from a doctor and then you're good. I am pregnant. I can't pretending like nothing happened. I can't. In my religion, we don't kill. You're not killing. Okay. I want to keep the baby. Okay. Well, like I said, I just don't want any kids. You want abortion. 
I mean, yeah. Why do you want a kid now? And why do you make me pregnant now? Because I'm like, there's no way that that's true. But then I said, oh, wow. Like, so just think about it. It's meant to be. God Sorry? wants to, God wants you to have the baby. Definitely not. It is. God wants you to have a baby. Seven years never happened. And then you're relate in a relate you're fucking me for a month and I'm pregnant. What does that mean? Well, like it, it now I just think about if like if you force me to kill the baby, then you're a sin. Well, we already sin by having sex. But it's too late now, you know? And this guy's just so stupid. I mean, both of them are really stupid. But she was making it clear that she wouldn't mind getting pregnant. Like, apparently they already had a pregnancy scare. And she was kind of disappointed that she got her period. And he was relieved. But she said, I mean, you're safe. Just letting you know. But next time, you won't be so lucky. So obviously this guy was playing with fire. And this was bound to happen. And it's funny because a big part of their podcast is talking about how girls always put themselves in bad situations. They never take responsibility for their actions. But that is exactly what's going on here with Walter. And he's taking no responsibility. And they tried to address the situation on their most recent podcast. And it was a shit show. You know, of course, they brought on a lawyer to talk for them. You know, because I'm sure the last thing Myron and their lawyer wants is Walter talking about the situation. You know, because he's such an idiot. Like, if he talks about it, he's only going to make things worse. I mean, it's hilarious to watch. Whenever Walter would start talking, the lawyer had to tell him to shut up. Like, right in the beginning, he had to train him to keep saying no comment. But first, he congratulated him on being accused of knocking up a 304. You know, it's a big accomplishment. That's where the high-value male lifestyle leads to you know having an unwanted kid with a girl that you absolutely despise now that's the life but also i agree that there are girls out there that do this kind of thing for money and fame and honestly this girl probably is one of them but i'm not going to feel sympathy for somebody that is this stupid and acts this irresponsible and he's supposed to be the expert here you know he's the one that has a whole podcast basically dedicated to talking about what these women are like and how they want you for your money and you have to watch out and all that shit but then he falls right into her trap which he originally didn't think was a trap so I don't know, you can't have it both ways. Like, is this a genuine girl who's into him for who he is? Or is it a girl who's just using him for his money and sees him as an opportunity? You know, which is it? As someone who's been practicing family law for 25 years is, a man is really not truly successful until the 304s come out of the woodwork and say, <laughs> I have your baby, I'm pregnant with your baby, I need to talk to you about the baby, what are we gonna do about the baby? Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, instead of having that conversation like a civilized human being with a working prefrontal cortex, <laughs> most of the time what they choose to do is to post it on social media because that's absolutely what a, a good future mom potentially or rational human being who's not just looking to shake someone down for money would do, you'd go right to social media. It certainly isn't the kind of thing a clout chasing no one would do. So ultimately, I wanna congratulate you. That's the good news, is that you have officially arrived, my friend. There are two words, my friend, that are not in your vocabulary currently, and they haven't been for years, and it's the reason why you're successful, but you need to repeat those two words after me. So let's practice together right now, ready? No. No. Comment. Oh, comment. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. No. Comment. Comment. All right. All right. Okay. So you got to learn to say that. Wait. And it's really unfortunate because I, I know, I know you are dying to talk about many of the things, many of the counter narrative, the facts as opposed to the fictions. Yeah, so honestly, having this lawyer on was probably a smart move because whenever these two goofballs would start talking, they would only make things worse. Like Myron, he was getting way too emotional, and Walter is just a complete moron. Like right after the lawyer gets done telling him to just say no comment and just shut up, he does actually try to take some accountability. Basically, he just says that he shouldn't have finished in a 304. Which is hilarious because Myron and the lawyer were trying to set the narrative like, hey, this girl, she could be completely full of shit. Who knows if she's pregnant? I mean, you can't trust her. You know, you have a lot of money and success. She clearly wants to take advantage of that. But then he's just like, yeah, I do regret nutting in her, though. I clearly made a mistake there. 
say this. I personally should not have nutted within a 304 like this. Now, granted, things happen, whether true or not. But, like you said, uh, James, I'll keep my mouth shut. Because I have some info here I want to share with, with the chat. Yeah, so telling these two to just shut up was definitely the smart move, you know, especially with Walter, because whatever this guy says, he is not going to help his case at all. And it's so funny seeing the lawyer have to deal with him. Like at one point, Walter says, I think one word, and the lawyer's just like, dude, you're killing me. And then once he leaves, Walter wants to say something, and everybody, like all the producers, is like, no, dude, shut up. You've said enough. And he just keeps saying, like, oh, I want to talk about this so badly. You know, I have all this evidence I want to show. And I don't think he realizes it, but the reason people don't want him to talk is because he just sounds like a complete idiot, and they know whatever he says is not going to help his case at all. Can't respond, right? Damn. I want to say something nope, so bad. you cannot respond. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm directing you not to respond. I know you want to. They can kill me in the chat if they want to. I will say one thing. Um, when Mario had his scenario. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm done. Okay, okay, I'm done. No, no, but uh, he's been a good, good friend because uh, uh, uh I, oh, no, we did this one. Can I? No, no, no. no. You just got to text another <laughs> crime that she involved in. No, not that. I was just gonna say like uh. Oh. No? No, no, no. But it's not even like bad. It's just like. You said enough. FYI, man. Like. Remember? I made a statement. Okay, I'll, I'll just say this. Just so it's indirectly gonna say what I'm gonna say right now. I made a statement on my vlog and on the show multiple times. And you can see the look on Myron's face is like, what the hell am I dealing with here? Even though he really wasn't helping much either. Like also the lawyer had to tell him to shut up a couple times. Like he started going off on the girl and talking about how she's a liar. And there are a few cuts here. Like I think they cut some moments out. And then the lawyer's just like, guys, please listen to me here. Just shut up. It amazes me that you guys are so quick to believe oh, that gets on the internet that clearly did this, set it up, premeditated, went to Instagram immediately after illegally recording a phone call, and you guys are so quick to say, wow, Fish, you're such a bad guy, blah, blah, blah. Bro, this chick is lying. It, like, I mean, this again, this is my take. I mean, I, I'm not privy to the conversations that Fresh had with his counsel, but I'm telling you as an outsider looking at it, I'm like, bro, this is a fucking lie. When I first came on uh, before we started recording and I spoke with the two of you briefly, I... I said to both of you that I think that the less that's said about this, the better from a legal perspective. I, I There's a script that I often give to clients, which is I have no specific recollection of any wrongdoing, although I acknowledge mistakes may have been made. I'd like to move forward past this unfortunate incident. You should write that shit down. Uh, I got to tell, tell you, man, you're killing me right now. You're <laughs> killing me with what you're saying right now. Because again, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. from I'm sorry. an entertainment and a reality perspective, I love it. Preach, my friends. But but now is not the time to unleash the crack in here. We've yeah, got, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. We've got I'm a done. lot of there is a lot being said right now. And I appreciate, Walter, that you are taking my advice and you are not saying it. But we are we are going down roads that we do not need to go down right now. This is one of those things that, again, just I'm going to say it one more time. You can listen or you can ignore it. There has to, there has, now is not the time for all of this information to be put out there. Yeah, no, my bad. Uh, I just, uh, no, you no, know. not your bad. I appreciate it, but there, there is a time. There will be a time. And that's basically how the whole thing went. But you could tell Myron is probably really annoyed with Walter. You know, you said actually behind the scenes before the podcast, he let Walter know that he screwed up big time and he said he flipped out at him, which I believe. Like also Myron had a complete meltdown during this podcast. Like he lost it and he smashed a cup on the ground and broke a TV. And you could tell the pressure is getting to him. Like I think he's smart enough to realize that Walter is a liability and he just cannot control himself even though he said he's still sticking by him, but we'll see how that works out. So that's about it for this video. But if you want to hear more about this, I'm going to talk about it a little more on Patreon. And there's also a ton of other stuff on there. Like I've been covering the Candace Owens Daily Wire fallout and her beef with Rabbi Shmuley and Alex Jones's debate with him. And there's just a ton of other stuff on there, over 70 videos. There's a lot to go through. So if you enjoy this content, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you go check it out. I'll put a link in the description.